our brain is around 2% of our body weight but it consumes more than 20% of the energy we need. It can simultaneously gather thousands of sensory inputs, interprets them, it is learning, planning, inventing. IBM estimates a supercomputer capable of doing similar things would drain out around 100 megawatt of power, equivalent to power a mini power plant produce. But our brain does all that work consuming around 20 watt power, less power than a CFL bulb needs. Our brain must be super duper complex and advanced. Yes, but I will try my best to give you the basic idea of our brain. For starters, we can divide the brain into three parts based on the region. First part, forebrain or prosencephalon. Second part, midbrain or mesencephalon. And third part, hindbrain or rhombencephalon. Forebrain is the most revolutionary advanced part which controls our thinking, decision making, memory, reasoning, social behavior, etc. And hindbrain controls all the vital functions in our body like breathing, heartbeat, digestion, some reflex actions and many other vital things. So it is the most primitive part of our brain. Now the forebrain is split into two sections. One telencephanol and second diencephanol. The part of the brain which makes you intelligent is cerebrum, which is part of telencephanol. When people talk about the grey matter that makes you intelligent, they generally refer to the grey matter of cerebral cortex, which is made of nerve cell body and dendrites. The grey matter part is involved in muscle control, sensory perception such as vision, hearing, etc memory, emotion, speech, decision making, self-control. Now, the white matter part beneath the gray matter is made of actions of nerve cells. The white matter part makes connections between different brain parts. The cerebral cortex has highly folded surface. The elevations are called gyri, plural of gyrus, and the groups are called sulci, plural of sulcus. The cerebrum is divided into two hemispheres. They are connected by a link made of white matter. It is called corpus callosum. The other part of the telencephanol that controls emotion, motivation and memory includes hippocampus, cingulate cortex, amygdala, etc. Remember the seahorse-like hippocampus part. It converts short-term memory into long-term memory so it is very very important part now the other part of the forebrain is diencephanol which is mainly made of thalamus and hypothalamus this part generally relay information and controls the pituitary gland which we know is a very important hormone gland now the midbrain it is associated with vision hearing motor control sleep wake arousal temperature regulation etc. It's a small thick stock like portion that connects forebrain with cerebellum of hindbrain. Now the hindbrain controls functions which are fundamental for survival like heartbeat, breathing, sleep, digestion, vasomotor activities, motor activities that is movement of limbs etc. It is composed of pons medulla oblongata and cerebellum first pons it may be very small but it plays sensory role in hearing taste and in facial sensation like touch pain as well as plays a major role in movement of eye chewing shallowing etc cerebellum which look like two half cauliflowers below cerebrum coordinates all the voluntary movements in our body and maintains equilibrium and the medulla oblongata is responsible for the basic life support functions like respiration heartbeat etc it also coordinates reflexes for shallowing coughing vomiting etc meditation influences this part of the brain very much hence meditation can be good for fundamental vital functions so just relax 
that was the basic of our complex brain. It's already too much information so that's all for now, we will continue later. Take care.